we don't want to jump on him. Dan must be very careful about the flight path he chooses. If he veers to either side or he doesn't get the thrust he needs, he will slam into one of the many boulders jutting out from the side of the mountain. I'm just going to do a standard base jump, like track position, jump out, go into kind of a delta and try and scoop some air, get away from the wall if I can. The moment has finally come for Dan to jump. For the first time, he admits that he's scared. This is it. This is the scariest. First time. Cameras have been set up at strategic points on the cliff to capture the world record free fall attempt from various angles. The only thing that I want to think about before I step off is my body. So I do a triple check from top to bottom, up and down one more time to make sure that everything's okay. Other than that, I don't want to be thinking about anything else. Remember, there are no nets, no safety lines, no parachutes to break his fall. Will his untested system of ropes, pulleys, and anchors hold up? Jump out, chest out, bust through, feel the wind coming in, stiffen the legs, head down, cup the chest, cup the wind with the hands. Okay. He's ready. Five. He counts four, it down. Three, two, one, launch! Dan's fall seems eternal, but now for the moment of truth, the ropes must hold. They have, and Dan is safe, and he has a new Guinness record, a cliff rope free fall of 1,000 feet. Here's how it looked to Dan. Yeah! Woo! Oh, man. Let's take a look at it in slow motion. Watch how Dan cups his body to catch air and steer himself away from the wall and towards the tiny clearing in the trees. Dan Osmond's 1,000 foot cliff rope free fall earned him a place in the Guinness record book and he couldn't be prouder. The Guinness Book of World Records is the mark of excellence in human achievement, and I'm honored to be a part of it. Having set a record many thought impossible, Dan sensed he couldn't continue to cheat death. I've really been going at a high rate, basically mock speed for the past several years doing this rope flying stuff, and um, a little bit of relaxation time, and give my guardian angels some time off because they've been doing a heck of a job. Too exhausted to tear down the hundreds of pounds of ropes, anchors, and pulleys, Dan left them in place. Three weeks later, he returned to retrieve them. One of the last things I said to Dan on that last day I saw him was, that's enough. Park it. Put your toys away. Give it a rest. Spend some time with your daughter. Enjoy your life. Driven to push his own limits and still trusting his guardian angels, Dan decided to jump one last time. Go now. This time, there were no cameras. He was accompanied only by his friend, Miles Dasher. Okay, when uh, Dano went on his uh, last jump, I uh, heard him launch off. You know, it's like an eight, nine second delay. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And the rope usually makes a swishing sound. Dano likes to call it flossing the sky. It makes this And uh, I started hearing that. And then that swish didn't, it wasn't a full swish. I heard Daniel give a brief yell. I mean, he must have known that something had gone wrong and that he was, this was it. And then it just sounded like a tree crashed in half. And at this point, I was just freaking. And I know my good bro is dead. Dan was found dead, lying peacefully on the canyon floor. His rope had mysteriously snapped. Some speculated it had become weathered and worn. People always used to ask him if he didn't have a death wish, and his most common response was, no, he had a life wish. And it was just pushing the edge of life and finding out what happens there at the, at the edge of life and death and the edge of fear and joy. Dan Osmond, age 35, two-time record holder, but his proudest accomplishment raising his now 12-year-old daughter, Emma. I think Emma, for Dan, 
was the affirmation of life. She represented everything that he that made him laugh and smile and and enjoy the day.